Hindus are muka pranis. <laughs> that means they usually don't speak. Many nations outside of India are realizing that, but here for political reasons and greed, we are holding it this way. This civilization is important for the rest of the world because the rest of the world is unfortunately in a conquest mode. Whatever they see, they want to conquer. This will ignite the whole world. This is not just for Hindus. For every human being on the planet, it will bring benefit. There is a way to do that. This debate was sparked by a viral video titled, Is India Becoming a Dictatorship? created by Dhruv Rati. One most important thing for this civilization to burst forth and become something significant in the next twenty-five years is the Hindu temple should come to the hands of Hindus. Yes. Really. Why? Why this is important? Because you must understand, Hindu temple is not a place of prayer. It is not even a place of worship. These were energetically consecrated spaces for different purposes, so that human beings will flourish, which they did in the past. When most of the world did not know what is what, we had the highest level of mathematics, music, astronomy, spiritual process. Yes. If you look at the thought process of people who were here five thousand, ten thousand years ago, but nowhere in the world anything like that happened. All this happened because we invested in the inner well-being of the human being. Temples are physical, monumental representations of that. It is not a place of worship. It is not a place of prayer where somebody leads you to say, you give me this money, then I will send a message to God and He will respond to you and He'll talk to you and all that stuff. Here, you went there only to have darshan, not to pray, you must understand this. You did not go to the temple to pray, you went there only to have darshan. Because you can't keep quiet, you'll start thinking of all kinds of rubbish, you there taught you something to say, no, 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 no. <laughs> in a language that you usually don't understand. Because just to keep yourself focused, it's about darshan imbibing the form into yourself. This is not to call God, to become God. Yes. This is not asking for somebody to come down and do something for you. It is for you to rise to that possibility. <clears throat> so, now we call ourselves a secular country which we are not because most of the Hindu temples are in the hands of the government run by government clerks, systematically being ruined. There is… there is no such thing as a temple without devotees. Yes. Only in the hands of a devotee, something becomes sacred. Hello? Yes. Can an employee who is looking what is his next increment, can handle something which will bring that possibility to people? No. And temple was a fulcrum of art, music, culture, everything. All that is completely being decimated. So this is not a question of my culture versus your culture. This is a conscious culture which was created in a way that human consciousness will be the most important part of your life. Other things are secondary. This is why when people lived in shacks, they built temples that you can't imagine. Great feats of engineering, architecture, an immense effort. How thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, five thousand years ago, they could have built these temples when there were no machines, there were no transporting uh, processes like machinery to transport or to lift stone, using millions of tons of stone. How did human hands do this? When you think about it really, next time you go to an ancient temple, you must look at it. Suppose you were here thousand years ago or fifteen hundred years ago or two thousand years ago, how would you put this into place without machines? It's simply impossible even to think. But they did these things because they saw human evolution is the most important thing. To hasten human evolution is the most important thing. Today whether you are driving a, a, a… you know, a luxury car or living in a palace or not is not the important thing. Human evolution is the most important thing. How to hasten that process? Because human evolution has come to a place where it can consciously evolve, that means you can take a million years or you can be there tomorrow morning. 
It's okay. your choice. That to exercise that choice is why we built these structures. But now, because everybody is thinking your community versus my community, it's becoming a competition process. This is not a competition with anybody. These are instruments for human well-being. Without this, we will end up living gross. This is one thing they must do because people have been waiting for this because Hindus are mukapranis. <laughs> that means they usually don't speak, whatever. <laughs> because these thousand years of invasions have taught them this, if you raise your head, your head may go off, put your head down and walk. So this does not mean we have to fight with somebody, why? We are saying every religion has the same right, every religion has the freedom to do what they want. When this is so, why are the temples being run by governments? Simply because there is money, yes. because there is wealth. These are energetic forms. These need to be kept alive for future generations to benefit from this. But time is running out for that. So what will this do? This will ignite the whole world. If we keep these places powerful, this is not just for Hindus. For every human being on the planet, it will bring benefit. For every living thing on the planet, it will bring benefit. There is a way to do that. And many nations outside of India are realizing that. But here, for political reasons and greed, we are holding it this way. If there is only one thing I can ask from the new government, this one thing must happen because this will transform the way we educate ourselves. This will transform the way we look at ourselves and the way we look at each other. We people are making fun. Oh, they have 33 million gods, goddesses, what nonsense. Duh, you know. Snake is a god, cow is a god, bull is a god. Why? Even a leaf is a god. Every bit of creation is god, even if I… if you can see an atom, if I look at an atom in an elect electron mi microscope, the first thing I will do is this. Hello? Because this is important. This civilization is important for the rest of the world, because the rest of the world is unfortunately in a conquest mode. Whatever they see, they want to conquer. Yes. Bowing down to everything they see doesn't exist. If this has to come, these temples have to be kept alive, not just as monuments, but as living things. These were created as living instruments to transform human consciousness. This has to come back because you're giving me only one thing. I'm saying this, whoever gets elected, this one thing must happen. Sadhguru discusses the importance of the government taking action regarding the management of Hindu temples in India. He emphasizes the need for temples to be in the hands of devotees rather than government clerks to maintain their sacredness. Sadhguru calls for a shift in focus towards preserving and honoring the cultural and spiritual significance of temples in India. In recent times, there has been a widespread debate surrounding the direction in which India is heading under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. This debate was sparked by a viral video titled Is India Becoming a Dictatorship? created by Dhruv Rathi, a prominent content creator, which has garnered an astonishing 13 million views on YouTube. Rathi's video delves into the concerns regarding the one nation, one party ideology of the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, highlighting the instances of media control, alleged political corruption, and the alleged misuse of enforcement agencies against opposition leaders. Nevertheless, it is crucial to delve deeper for these claims and examine them within the broader context of Modi's governance and leadership in order to gain a comprehensive understanding of the situation. Modi's recognition of the need for further deliberation and consensus building is always evident in the postponement of the implementation of the Women's Reservation Act. This sensitive issue requires more dialogue and consensus before its effective implementation. The Citizenship Amendment Act CAA, is another instance where Modi's government delayed a caution approach. Although a CAA was passed by parliament, the necessary rules for its implementation have not been formed yet. This delay is seen as a response to protests and concerns raised by various groups indicating Modi's willingness to reassess and modify policies based on public feedback. Modi's leadership style can be characterized as a unique blend of setting him apart from traditional authoritarian leaders 
known for ruling with an iron fist. What sets Modi apart? His willingness to engage with various stakeholders and adapt his approach based on feedback and changing circumstances. In conclusion, Modi's leadership style is characterized by assertiveness and pragmatism. Coupled with the willingness to listen to various stakeholders and adopt his approach accordingly, his instances of restraint and compromise demonstrate his commitment to institutional integrity, responsiveness to public concerns, and recognition of the importance of the consensus building on complex and sensitive issues. Similarly, Modi's government faced significant opposition to amendment aimed at simplifying the land acquisition process of industries. In response to the opposition, Modi withdrew the amendments. Recognizing the importance of consensus building and dialogue with stakeholders, the prolonged process and government's inaction on the Rohini Commission's report concerning OBC subcategorization further exemplifies Modi's approach of careful consideration rather than hasty decision making. It suggests that the issue is complex and requires through examination. Furthermore, Modi's commitment to the rule of law and adherence to judicial decisions can be seen in the case of Ram Temple construction in Ayodhya. His government aided by Supreme Court orders and waited for legal clearance before proceeding with the construction, showcasing his respect of the rule of law and judicial decisions. One notable instance of Modi's restraint and willingness to compromise is evident in his response to the Supreme Court's opposition to the National Judicial Appointments Commission bill. Despite facing opposition, Modi respected the independence of the judiciary and did not pursue further reforms, demonstrating a commitment to maintaining institutional integrity. Another example of Modi's willingness to listen and address concerns is seen in handling of the controversial farm laws. Although initially introducing these laws aimed at reforming the agriculture sector, Modi responded to widespread farmers' protest by putting the implementations of the law on hold. This move showcased his responsiveness to the concerns of the farming community and his willingness to engage in dialogue to find common ground. Despite the Bharatiya Janata Party's manifesto promise to implement a uniform civil code, Modi has not actively pursued this agenda, likely due to the controversial nature of the issue and the need to scale public sentiment before introducing such acts. This decision highlights Modi's recognition of the importance of careful consideration and the need of consensus building on sensitive issues. Moving forward, it is crucial to individuals to reflect on the complexities of governance and leadership within a democratic society. Are the claims of India's potential drift towards dictatorship overblown or is there merit of these concerns? Let's continue the conversation and share our perspectives on this matter in the comments section. It is important to highlight that despite the criticism and concerns surrounding Prime Minister Modi's leadership in India, there is evidence to suggest that he was shown a willingness to engage with diverse viewpoints, prioritize consensus building and uphold institutional integrity. This challenges the perception of India heading towards dictatorship under his rule. Before surgery, Sadhguru explains his power to scientists. Watch this video now. If you find this video informative, be sure to like, share and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Pranam.